Let's now see how you can add your iPhone Studio projects into your GitHub uh, private repository. Okay. Let's now first of all create a private repository. And if you log into your GitHub account, educational account, uh, click on the plus here and then say repository, new one. And then for illustration, let's say iPhone, hello world. Okay, and then make sure it is private. And then as before, we're gonna initialize with the readme file, but I'll leave the contents of the readme file to you. Okay, you should really always keep good documentation. And now for the git, uh, git ignore, we're gonna specify this uh, when we clone your project into the uh, your desktop. So there's an easier way to modify uh, the ignore file. So we're gonna do that over there. So create a repository over here. Okay, it's been created. And then of course, I will leave it to you to uh, uh, update the readme file. So now let's clone this particular repository. So now let's say clone or download, and then I'm gonna do the manual way, or you can just say open in desktop, okay? Just in case it doesn't work on your machine. So I'm going to say copy here, and then I'm going to go to my uh, GitHub desktop. On your GitHub desktop IDE, so let's go for file and clone repository. And here you, under URL, I'm going to paste the URL I just copied from the web. And then for the workspace over here, let's say we choose a different place. So for example, on my desktop, I created a folder for 3311. And at the moment it's simply just empty. Okay, so what I will do is I will go back to this panel here and then I will say choose. And then I will choose 3311 to be the overall uh, place for all the GitHub repositories. I will say open here. You can see under 3311. So this is iPhone Hello World repository name. And then I'll say clone. Initially, you should see that over here under iPhone Hello World subfolder, there's only the readme file, right? If you open that, you'll be, uh, you should really uh, edit that using the markdown syntax. Uh, I will leave that to you. So now let's see how we can uh, create a new project over here inside this subfolder and then we can push the uh, updates, the, uh, the new changes back to the uh, online private repository. Let's see the, how the workflow goes. Okay, remember uh, from the previous video, you can refer to it, like we actually explained how you can do the push and pull in both directions, okay? You can review the previous video for the general idea, okay? So now let's first of all oh, uh, launch iPhone Studio over here and then we'll create a new project just for illustration. So iPhone Studio is going to launch and then we're going to say, we're gonna create a new project here. I'll say basic application and then I'll say create. And then what I will do is you can, uh, for now I'll just say projects and application, right? Nothing uh, I will change. And then I'll just go to desktop uh, 3311 and then go and choose iPhone uh, Hello World, which is the GitHub repository I just uh, cloned. And then I'll say, okay. And then I'll say, okay. And then let's maximize the window for iPhone Studio. Let's just wait for initial compilation to stop, to terminate. Okay, it's, it's done. And then first of all, let's just run, okay? Uh, actually, before we run, let's just go back to the folder over here. You can see now under iPhone Studio, we have our application class, uh, the project, the ECF file, and also the ifgens. So the ifgens, remember, it's simply just automatically generated C code uh, for your project. So this is something you really don't want to really uh, push onto your online repository because it can just be automatically generated as we really too uh, space consuming. So what we will do is we're going to commit, but before we do the commit, we want to add certain rule uh, to ignore this folder particularly, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go back to the uh, GitHub desktop over here. Okay, you can see by default, all the ifgens over here have been selected if we try to commit, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to ignore such a uh, folder. What we'll do is we'll go under repository and then click on repository settings. And then we go to ignore files over here. So this is where you can put uh, files and also folder uh, that you want to ignore. For example, we want to ignore everything under the folder ifgens. So we can put ifgen. Okay, make sure you spell that properly. And then as soon as we say save, you can see the ifgens have been 
excluded from the uh, files to be committed to your online repository. Okay, so over here, what we will do is summary here. We would say uh, initial hello world project. Like, let's put a little bit more details over here. I've gens have been excluded uh, via the repository settings. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll say, first of all, commit. Okay, so after commit, we want to push, right? Remember, if you only commit, the effect is only uh, visible at the local level. So we have to push this uh, commit uh, back to the uh, origin, the original uh, online private repository. So we will say push. Okay, after we have done this, now if you try to go back to the uh, your GitHub account over there on the web browser, and then if you refresh, what you will see is you can see that the uh, application.e and also project.ecf, only these two files were committed over there. You can see the ifgens were not committed. So that's really important that you did that initial step to exclude the ifgens or any other files you would like to exclude from your uh, backup on the GitHub. Okay, let's do a little bit more uh, changes uh, illustration for you. Okay, so now let's go back to Eiffel Studio. Of course, let's say currently we just want to run the program. Uh, remember, if you go under projects and application over here, you can see hello Eiffel world. Okay, if you run it, you will see that on the command prompt, you're going to get uh, some output over here. Okay, let me show you. You can see hello Eiffel world. Let's say we want to do one more change. Let's just do one change to illustrate. Let's say hello world rather than hello Eiffel world. Okay, or hello GitHub. How about that? GitHub world like that. And then what we will do is we'll say compile and then we'll say run. First of all, we'll see that on the same terminal over there, it's not hello GitHub world. So that means our program has been changed at the local machine. So what we'll do is if you go back to your GitHub desktop, you can see first of all, under history, it shows that uh, over here we actually uh, that that was the that was the last change we made that was committed, which it was which was to exclude the ifgens. And now currently the current change, which has not been committed, was that we go we went from iPhone into GitHub. So the green one is the current version over here, and the red one, sorry, the green one is the new version to be committed, and the red one is the current version. Okay. So let's see what we can do over here. So now let's say we want to commit this change and then we'll just say uh, changed to, uh, let's say, uh, change uh, print message, for example. We can say from, oh, let's just simply change to, okay, just make it a little bit briefer. Change to hello GitHub world. Okay, and then we'll say commit to master over here, and then we say push to origin, right? So that's kind of the, the changes you can make on your local computer using Eiffel Studio. You can see that Eiffel Studio is simply just an application that is much more suitable to edit the files in your local repository. And as soon as you're done with these changes, they will be reflected on the uh, GitHub IDE, in which case you can decide which one to commit and push back. Okay, so now we have pushed. So now what we'll do is go back to the web over here and then we'll simply refresh. And then what we will do is we can go to over here, uh, over here. If you can see the three commits over here, you can see, so this is the history for you to look at. And now initial commit, uh, initial hello world project and also change print message, right? If you click on that, you will see that that's exactly the change uh, history that you just saw on your local computer IDE. Okay, so that's kind of the uh, simple work pattern you can follow through and for your iPhone studio project for your lab or for your projects.